A former secretary to the government of the Federation, Babacher Lawal, has again spoken against the Muslim-Muslim ticket of the All-Progressive Congress, stating that Christian politicians in the northern part of Nigeria would remain steadfast in their stand for justice, equity and fair play. According to him, any nation or political dispensation built on injustice would crumble because justice and equity settle all other dis disputes. Now, he said neither the APC presidential candidate Asiwa Jubola Ahmed Tinubu nor his running mate Kashim Shatima and the political party has seen anything wrong in their choice of a same faith ticket for the presidency in the coming elections to make peace with or assuage the feelings of northern Christian politicians. Well, joining us to talk about this is Reverend Joseph Hayev. He is the chairman, Christian Association of Nigeria, Kaduna State. And Samaila Musa is the director of Strategic Communications Coalition of Northern Groups. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Great. Um, Reverend Hayab, you and I have had a similar conversation on this Muslim Muslim ticket and the agitations. Now we see it. It, it would be normal um, when we see outsiders who are not necessarily members of the party agitating against the ticket and and the Muslim Muslim or the same faith ticket. But then we're seeing members of the APC who are agitating against this ticket. Now also, I'd like to quickly put in that um, over the weekend we saw some clerics who were meeting with the presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress, and this seemed to have been frowned upon by the um, um, Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria. Shed some light on that for us, please. Yeah, when we advised the political parties long before their primaries that, look, Nigeria is actually divided. There is a need for us to be sensitive to the reality at the moment. There is so much tension. There is suspicion. Let all political parties ensure that they have a balanced ticket, which simply means we will not support any same faith ticket if it is Christian, Christian, or Muslim, Muslim. So it's not just about Muslim. If the ticket is Christian, Christian, we will also say no to it as we are doing now. And so when this denomination came out publicly, we came out to condemn it and express our concern. And we actually challenged the Christian members of that political party and asked them, look, this is not an insult to us as Christians, but to you Christians of that political uh, party, because if you say he didn't find any Northern Christian or suitable or qualified or competent, I am not. I don't believe he's talking to us. He's talking to you. Those of you who are in that party, it shows that you are not qualified. And I must commend uh, Babashi Lawal and commend Dogara and others and uh, Senator Abu, who came out publicly to say, yes, we agree, this is wrong and must be corrected or sh something must be done about it. Uh, so unfortunately, instead of this political party to come out and even offer arguments or clarification, it seems they've just recruited so many characters come out to insult people, and then now they begin to buy people to come out and identify with them. Like the group you talked about, I know many of them, and the truth is that I personally, they reached out to me and I told them, I have no reason to disagree with the position of Khan to meet Ahmed Bola Tinebu. If he must meet Christians at all, when he meets Khan, I will, be, I will sit there as one of the uh, executive officers and discuss with him, but I won't have another private meeting under any name. And when I actually look at some of those who went there, I challenge them. I even call one of them today as a bishop. I will, you were introduced as a Pentecostal fellowship bishop. Are you one? Because I know you don't belong to that group. And he started saying, you know, I said, no, excuse me, be honest to yourself. You are not a PFN because some of those people who even stood up there or sat in the high table with them are not Pentecostal bishops. So these are the mix up. So there's so much effort out there to show that no Christians are discussing with them, but they cannot even have the patience to go out and reach the real Christian leaders who people know. Because I've always said is that Christians in Nigeria and in northern Nigeria specifically, Know the difference between uh, some characters that are being bought for political reason and their leaders who have been there even when there was no primaries for political uh, election. Yeah, they know the leaders who have been there when there is crisis, when there is kidnapping. So people know the difference between this leader and those ones who are coming out now, uh, going to get some envelopes in those uh, political uh, actors. So we feel strongly that something is wrong. And then the next thing we saw is some groups that do not even exist. We've never seen them. We've never heard about them coming out to start castigating these names like Babashi Lawal and uh, 
the Ogara and calling them names. I'm not sure that's how we're supposed to play politics. Okay. If we want to play politics, we must come out and sell our candidate with love, sell our candidate with respect, convince people with superior argument about whatever decision we've taken, but not trying to play a smart one. They started that in the day they were presenting their vice president by bringing people who were not bishop and claimed they were bishop. Okay. And some of us told them they, they didn't even do a good rehearsal in knowing how bishops were, where they are coming. So these are many others are some of the mix up that we are seeing. But let me put this clear. I don't think we can are wasting time on this matter anymore. Okay. We have met our point known and we stand by that and we're not involved in all this kind of conversation. If uh, this candidate like he should call as many characters, parade them on television and say they are Christians, like I've said earlier, the Christian community knows the difference between their leaders from people who are hungry. Smiler, let me bring you in now. You, of course, are a young person and um, you belong to a group of people who... Um, are from the north and of course that group i believe have christians and have muslims um what's your take on the same faith ticket because i know that there are people who are of the school of thought that oh nigeria is at a point where we don't necessarily want to look at the your religious background but what you bring to the table uh, but i'd like to hear your position on this particular matter and why um the apc seems to be very com comfortable with this ticket Okay, uh, I think it's very important at this point uh, for us to just uh, lay it bare as it is. I don't know if you can hear me clearly. Very well. Okay, uh, you see, uh, we're actually trying to see how we can move this nation uh, in terms of our politicking, uh, uh, you know, the atmosphere of politics in this nation to uh, a, a pedestal that's actually uh, beyond all this uh, primordial sentiment. But unfortunately, uh, the APC actually didn't take the right step. Like uh, Reverend Hayek uh, rightly pointed out, you know, we've always been of that same opinion that, you see, this is not the time for some uh, kind of arrogance. Uh, you know, we are all humans. We know how we are in this country when it comes to issue of our ethnicity, issues of religion. But of course, while we're trying to see how we can go back to uh, the old system of the United Nigeria that it was during, uh, like we keep referring to all the time, during uh, our, our founder fathers, uh, we need to also be very, very considerate and know the kind of languages we'll be using on television or on, uh, on radio, you know, trying to be blind to other people's uh, uh, pain, you know. Uh, it's very okay if you say, oh, we are taking a decision as a political party. You know, if I'm not a member of your political party, which means I really don't have a say on how you run your politics. But one thing that is very key is that when you're giving our appointment to a, a spokesperson, there should be clear terms of reference. There should be, you know, some languages that shouldn't be used. You should be very, very, uh, you know, very, very uh, sensitive to the audience you're addressing, knowing that they belong to both religion. The APC at this juncture can actually retrace its steps and say, well, we have actually taken this decision not because we're considering the issue of religion to be of any, uh, uh, you know, paramount, uh, you know, importance at this stage, but because of, you know, the complexity of the candidates himself and then the running mate, why the choice of the running mate. You can explain to Nigerians, not just the Christian community, not just, not just the uh, Muslim, I mean, uh, the Northern uh, Christians, but Nigerians at large. You need to come up with superior arguments like he mentioned. You know, while I I'm not also forgetting the background I'm trying to lay is that we, this time around, Nigeria is actually in a very terrible mess. We need capable behind who can actually pull us out of this doldrum. But at the same time, while we're trying to do that, we should be fair enough to everyone. But having said that, the APC has its genuine reasons why they come up with this. But you see, the manner of approach, the utterances is what is completely unacceptable. You should be able to convince, because politics campaigns is about trying to convince the others, even your own opponents, you're trying to convince them while your candidate should be the right choice. So it's, it's, I mean, it's not late for the APC to try to do that. I don't like some of the faces of the spokesperson of APC that I'm seeing on television. I hate it when I see people being arrogant. 
You see when you see people who are arrogant this way, especially, you know, the APC cannot actually be divorced from being arrogant because we saw that in the president of the nation where things happen and he doesn't feel there's any need to address the nation where things are going bad. Or when people get killed in their hundreds and he doesn't feel there's any need to explain anything to anyone. And the same thing is playing out by the choice of the spokespeople of the APC. And I think, you know, people might initially like the candidate or even like the candidate up to now, but some people will have reasons to say, oh, no, but what I don't like is this arrogance. The APC presidential candidate is not arrogant. The running mate is not arrogant. But the people who are saddled with the responsibility of trying to explain to, to Nigerians are putting on a different body language that is saying you can go to hell, which is very, very unacceptable. So I think the APC I, I, should I'm, I'm go curious. back to the I'm, I'm, board I'm right. curious. Let me come in there, Simaila. So you're saying that... Yeah. Oh, maybe Festus Kayama was nicer with his words, that the ticket, the same face ticket will sit better with Northern Christians. Is this the case that you're making? And are you speaking for Northern Christians that maybe if arrogance were taken out of the picture, it would sit well with them? Yeah, well, you know, we, our presentation is widespread in all the 19 Northern states, including the FCT. And, you know, we have members of it up to the world level. And so we need to relate uh, what are the feelers like from even the grassroots, is not, they don't, not that people really have much issues with people who actually have the capacity to pull Nigeria out of this, this doldrum, out of this mess. But the manner of approach, the utterance is, in particular, Festus Kayamo uh, has been very arrogant with the way he's going about it. But this is not uh, activism. You know, you can be an activist, it's fine, I don't have a problem with that. But you see, when it comes to campaign, you should know that beyond your opponents, you're also trying to address the masses. So there's the need to explain these things in a way that doesn't feel hurting to the other people who are actually trying to make or some valid point. But beyond that, it's that who and who has the capacity. What we should be talking about at this particular time should be beyond the issue of religion. Should be that, oh, what are your credentials? What have you done for yourself? What have you done in the past? What posts have you held and how did you perform in those positions that you held in the past? What are people saying about you, about your body language? What is your uh, leadership approach to diversity? What, how do you feel about the other religion? How do you feel? So questions need to okay. be asked and there should be answers that are very uh, comforting, okay. you know, but not this arrogance about spewing all manner of, you know, just vituperating of this kind of things all the time. Okay. Uh, it doesn't sit well with people. And then it further divides us as a people. And okay. if you notice from the angle of the coalition of northern groups, what we've been trying to do all this while is just try and see how we can actually unite the people, especially between the Christians and the Muslims in the northern Nigeria, especially. And even uh, there's no time there are crises that we are not actually in the forefront of trying to see okay. how we can come, I mean, bring an end to that crisis. All right, let me bring you back in, Reverend Hayab. Just coming from where he stopped, he's saying that. Maybe the manner of approach, maybe if we dropped the arrogance, maybe this ticket would be a bit, bit more less of a bitter pill to swallow for those who seem to be against the same faith ticket. Uh, that's my first question. My second question is, um, how have these politicians played, uh, or what role have they played in helping us to go to a point where we would be devoid of all of these differences and these very obvious lines that are are drawn against us as opposed to where we are and where we want to be? Well, uh, you see, anytime we want to speak nicely, let me say we want to be politically correct, we will say, you, you know, we don't care about where the candidate is, we don't care about his tribe, we don't care about his religion, we don't care about his religion, we just want someone who will deliver the good. That is right and politically correct. But let me put it this way. If we, if we say that, and we honestly believe in that, then that means we can also accept to have a president and a vice president all from Lagos, as long as they're going to deliver the good. We can also accept to have the president and the vice president all from Kano, as long as they're going to deliver the good. We can also say we are ready and willing to accept the president from uh, Rivers, as long as he delivers the good. So that means we don't care whoever becomes the president, whoever is the vice president. But the reality is different from that sweet language. 
So there is this need for people to be carried along. Some of the places that these things have t- been tested, we saw that it didn't give good results. It instead give room for more fear, more doubt, more suspicion, and we don't want that to continue in Nigeria. As we continue this journey of helping each other to know that we are one country, one indivisible country, let's be honest to ourselves that we need other people. And our constitution clearly provided a, 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 an avenue for character reflection or federal character reflection. And this federal character reflection is not just about state, it's not just about religion, it also talks about other things that we need to know that are sensitive to our unity, sensitive to our togetherness. So for my submission simply is that at this time, Nigerians are not happy. What I know from my conversation in the grassroots, I don't know the other ones where they are conversing, people are not happy with this at all. Okay. The impression people are having is a lay. It is another plan for domination. Someone somewhere, I have people say to me, if when we even have a vice president or we have a mixed situation and certain things are done on challenge, how will it happen when we don't even have it? So I beg the political class not to think that everybody do not understand. We, we do understand more than they do. And we are saying that do the right thing because we want to heal the country okay. first before we talked about that. Then I haven't said that. Uh, you I'm see, sorry, Reverend, because as a we're group, running out of time quickly, I just want to bring uh, him back in. So, my that quickly, mm. uh, Senator Habumwa uh, of the APC has said that this Muslim Muslim ticket might be the end of the road for APC, meaning that it might just cost them the election. Quickly, uh, what are your thoughts? Because we're out of time. Okay, uh, my thought exactly is that, you see, uh, I don't really want us to overheat the polity or the issue of this uh, Muslim Muslim ticket. Uh, there are other parties, actually, you know. So if we feel, okay, this one is not doing, it's not being fair to us, uh, you know, within the political parties or within the party itself, I know there are Christians there who perhaps are silent because of what also they are looking for in, within the party. Or maybe they are also privy to some uh, information that the rest of the masses are not aware of why the choice of the Muslim Muslim ticket. It's high time for them to begin to voice it out, to say, to explain in total why this has to happen. But having said that is that, look, there's no point to overhate this polity. Uh, there's, there's Labour Party there as well. There's uh, PDP there as well. Except if you feel Oh, I'm a member of the APC, and then I'm not happy with what my party has just done with this Muslim Muslim ticket. You have the right to protest, uh, and that's why I give kudos to Baba Chulawal and uh, uh, okay. uh, the former Speaker of the House of Representatives who what with what they're doing. We so, have to go. You see, that you know, if, if you saw what? We have to go. Time is up. <laughs> oh, okay. So. Oh, okay, no problem. Well, I want to say thank you, gentlemen. Unfortunately, we're racing against the clock. Reverend Joseph Hayeb is the chairman, Christian Association of Nigeria, Kaduna State, and Samila Musa is the director of Strategic Communications Coalition of Northern Groups. Thank you so much, gentlemen. I wish we had more time to have this conversation, but thank you. Thank you, too, for having us. All right. And that's it on the show tonight. I'm Mary Anakon. We'll be back tomorrow, of course, talking about the biggest stories in our political scene in Nigeria and, of course, other parts of Africa. Have a good evening.